you know what? This scene right here, this scene right here says a lot about society. Hello all and welcome back to another wonderful video. Today we are here and today it is Hitch Day. That's right. That's not an official holiday, of course, but uh, today we're going to be taking a look at Hitch from My Little Pony A New Generation. Uh, like the previous few videos that I did, taking a deeper look at the other characters and talking about them and stuff like that, I did a poll and you guys really wanted to see Hitch next, so here it is. Let's talk about Hitch. What do we know about Hitch? He's been friends with Sprout and Sunny ever since they were kids, and from the short time that we see them as kids playing and everything like that, it seems like Hitch is caught between Sunny and Sprout. Not in a relationship type way, but in a way that sort of makes him the glue that keeps their relationships together, their friendships together. But it almost seems like he's also this sort of wall that stops them from butting heads all the time. This uh, mediator or uh, this judge or this sheriff, this whoever you want to say, he tries to please Sprout by agreeing with him that his version of history is accurate, but he also tries to please Sunny by telling her he's fine with them playing her way. He doesn't care as long as they have fun. He's trying to please both of them, and I think this desire to please everyone kind of might play into some insecurities that I'll talk about later. It could also have some other meanings and stuff like that, such as the fact that he's the element of kindness, he's trying to be nice to everyone, so of course uh, that plays into, you know, him being kind to everyone, so maybe that's also what it is. But anyway, let's move on. Hitch ends up leaving with Sprout later and clearly hears Sprout expressing his desire to be sheriff, which probably inspired him to chase the same goal. I feel like he probably would have just been there to help Sprout become a sheriff, maybe support him, maybe they went to the same schooling or something like that, and he was like, oh, I'll do this, and I'll, I'll help you become sheriff and everything like that. Maybe that's what he did at first, and then uh, he was gonna, you know, be Sprout's deputy. Maybe that's what he had planned all along, but then ended up being way too good at it, getting his cutie mark for it, and then later becoming sheriff for real. And honestly, if that's how it played out, I imagine he probably made Sprout uh, this... Uh, deputy just as an act of kindness, despite very clearly not being able to handle that responsibility. We never really see anything about Hitch's family life or really a lot of stuff in his childhood, but I have some other ideas on what his home life might have been like and stuff like that, but for now, uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Let's look at some other things. Hitch has this weird thing about him where it seems like he knows exactly who he is and what he's meant to do, but also seems like he doesn't know anything about himself. His powers and abilities, such as communicating with animals, is something he's never really understood, and it doesn't appear to be something he's accepted or embraced either. The power itself is very strange, but it's not explored in the short amount of time that we had for the movie. Hitch's other strange attribute that almost seems suppressed is this dancing. Like, literally every time there's music, he dances. And it's not like full on dancing or anything like that, it's more of like he's bobbing his head or shaking his butt or whatever like that. But the reason I say it seems suppressed is because it kind of looks like he's not controlling it or that he doesn't want to do it but he's doing it anyway. Or maybe it's something he doesn't realize he's doing every time and stuff like that. I mean there, there is one scene where he comes into the, the place and they're singing the song or whatever and he starts shaking his booty like I mentioned earlier. And then he looks at it and he rolls his eyes and he continues to dance but he just moves on. Like that's what I mean by the fact that it doesn't look like he can control his body when it comes to dancing. I, I, I don't know, I just personally find it very strange that every time there's some form of music or something like that, Hitch just dances to it, usually doing some subtle movements and stuff like that. Now we don't have any idea what Hitch's parents were like, or what his home life were, was like or anything like that, but what if they were really strict on him? What if they didn't really approve of all this dancing or anything that could be considered silly? I know that's a bit of a stretch, because we literally have basically nothing to go off of, but it just feels like Hitch is suppressing parts of himself, and we know for sure that he himself is strict on the law. So it feels like there's something there, we just don't quite have all the pieces yet, because it very clearly seems like he's suppressing parts of himself and stuff like that. And it's very wild how like super strict he is on the law. Except when it comes to Sunny and stuff like that. I don't want to talk about Sunny, but uh, she is like somehow free from the law. I'm going to be talking about that in a totally different video once I get to Sunny's analyzing video or whatever. But today is about Hitch. Although I should say that Hitch could be a determining factor in why Sunny never faced the law before, because they are friends or whatever, and we do know for a fact that he is the one who stopped her in the past from crashing the Cantrologic show 20-something uh, moons in a row, so she's she's committed plenty of other violations outside of that, but 
still, we'll get into that in another video. However, I do want to mention one more thing about that. The fact that he doesn't prosecute her for violating all these sort of laws and stuff like that could also play into the fact that, again, he's trying to please literally everyone. Hitch doesn't do anything really silly or fun in the movie, except when he's forced to or when he's doing something like the subtly dancing thing. He's very serious all the time, and he's actually really smart and resourceful too. He very easily tracks Sunny and Izzy to Zephyr Heights. Like, th think about like what he probably had to do to figure out where they were going and how they got there. There's no telling how he did it. And of course, once he actually does get close to Zephyr Heights, he starts seeing tracks and he sees like hair and, and feathers and stuff like that. And he's like, oh, I found you now. And he he's on their trail. Now, of course, once he gets there and finds out they were arrested, uh, he formulates a plan to disguise himself as a Pegasus and sneak into the party and catch them. He built his own disguise. He built his own disguise all by himself. And honestly, just everything that Hitch does is just really impressive. Like he's a very impressive very well used character he's nearly perfect though <laughs> i mean he's got a paid off mortgage it doesn't get much more perfect than that but maritime bay listens to hitch other than him the only other pony who seems to have any influence or control over the town is phyllis who i still think is some kind of mare or something because i don't know they just listen to what she says and what and stuff like that it's just really weird but hitch is able to organize the town amidst the chaos and stuff like that and when he is gone, the town really has no idea what to do. They're completely lost without him. I think this dependency on Hitch's kindness to everyone is why Sprout has this sort of sour feeling towards Hitch. He's still friends with him, but he's jealous that Hitch has such a perfect life. From being a natural at a sheriff, which is a dream that he wanted, not Hitch, to having the whole town appreciate and listen to him, it's... It, it makes a lot of sense. I made a whole video about Sprout's tragic life and all this other stuff. So if you want more of my thoughts on like why I think Sprout is the way he is, you can check that out on my channel. But anyway, all this kindness still doesn't extend to other creatures. Sure, he is still at least somewhat kind to the little animals such as the birds and bunnies and stuff like that. But Pegasi and unicorns is something he really truly believes are evil and dangerous, which makes sense because that's what they're taught their whole life. But Hitch also has a certain egotistical thing going on with him. He's so sure of himself and so full of himself, which kind of makes sense given the position he is. But he's constantly praising himself and acting like the hero, where in reality, he's barely done anything heroic in his life. There's never been a unicorn or pegasus attack to be a hero in, you know, save the day by stopping them or anything like that. Crime basically doesn't exist at all. Like, you never see any crime. Everyone seems too too dumb to commit crimes, you know what I mean? And, and just so on. He acts like this hero and acts as close to a narcissist as you can be without being one. Which we know he's obviously not one because he still cares about others and he's still really kind, but it's just, it's just one of these major faults that... Uh, not a lot of people talk about. He's kind of narcissistic a little bit. Just just a little bit. Enough to where he's like right on the borderline of it. And it's crazy. All of that, of course, is probably another factor into what soured his friendship with Sprout. So Hitch has this kindness balanced by his ego that he doesn't really let go of until pretty far into the movie. Hitch is one of the only characters, actually probably the only character, that has a complete arc in the movie. A proper good one, at least. Sunny, of course, goes from unicorns and Pegasi can be our friends to, at the end of the movie, Pegasi and unicorns can be our friends. There's no real arc there. There's no real growing there. Uh, Zip goes from, uh, I'm right, we can make, we can bring magic back to, haha, see, I was right, we got magic back. Pip. Pip kind of has a slight arc, I guess you could argue, because she goes from, I don't want to help these people because they ruined my life, to, that's fine, I'll help you, we, we brought magic back. And then all these other characters, they just don't really seem to have any arc. I mean, Izzy especially has basically no arc. She stays the same throughout the entire movie. But, but what I'm saying is, Hitch basically is the only character that really has a complete arc in the movie, and it's a really good one. He actually slowly loses this egotistical nature about him, but I suspect we'll still see sprinkles of it throughout the series because that just makes sense. Just before he finally changes sides, he's failing to light this campfire and he tells Sunny that he kind of just wants to go back to Maritime Bay where he's needed. I think this line has a double meaning. He's feeling very useless and out of place in this new group. No one is doing anything that he wants. No one's doing what he says like they did back in town. No one is feeding his ego like they did back in town, and no one has asked for his help at all like they did back in town. 
He's done nothing up to this point except fail and fail and fail, and that is shattering his perfection. That's shattering his whole life, so to speak. He's no longer this perfect little pony capable of doing anything and saving the day. This is why I think his egoness is probably part of some kind of childhood uh, thing that happened to him and something that he's sort of keeping suppressed, these insecurities. It's coming from a place of insecurity that he suppressed, perhaps. Ever since he was expected to be perfect, maybe that was something that his parents did. Maybe they expected him to be perfect, and so he just created this illusion of being perfect, but he had all these insecurities going on or something like that. I don't know. But uh, ignoring that as a possibility that this are insecurities or th this past theoretical childhood or whatever like that, Hitch is going through a lot, and everything he believed is falling apart. He's failed so much in the past two days, and he wants a win. He needs a win right here. I think by the time the campfire scene happens, Hitch is already well on their side to bring Magic back. He's already on the side of Sunny and all the other characters, but he's holding himself back from accepting that because he no longer has control. He no longer has this sense of security, and he can no longer tell where that side of the law is. He can no longer tell what's the wrong side, what's the right side. Because of everything that happened in the movie and everything Hitch went through in it, I think he's probably going to give up being Sheriff uh, in the series or something like that and do some sort of finding himself arc or something like that. Either way though, Hitch is the element of kindness, so whatever he ends up doing, I'm pretty sure we can be like 100% positive that he's going to focus on helping others and spreading this kindness. I suspect we'll learn more about his relationship and his past with Sprout and stuff like that, and I think we'll also see him learn to embrace the animals rather than avoid them as he did so often in the movie, because if you really pay attention to the movie, a lot of the times he seems very annoyed by the animals and how they won't leave him alone, and even at the very end of the movie it doesn't really look like he's accepted the fact that these animals just love him and just follow him around everywhere. Uh, it's just, it's it's a whole thing. That's one of the things that they don't really go through, so I think that's something that we'll see in this series. Anyway, uh, I think he will finally accept himself for who he is and be better for it. I think, I think that's sort of the arc that he'll go on in the series. But anyway, those are my thoughts and opinions on Hitch. Uh, this one was much shorter than the other ones because Hitch doesn't really have a whole lot going on. I mean, he has a whole lot going on, but there's not really a whole lot that's just not, like, very obvious. You know what I mean? Uh, he's just very near perfect, but he's got that egoness to him, and I think that's something that uh, he'll slowly have throughout the series that will slowly sort of trickle away as time goes on or something. Uh, I don't think he's just going to be like a Fluttershy clone or something. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do consider liking, subscribing, sharing, and doing all those wonderful things like that. Because when you do those wonderful things like that, not only do you get access to wonderful content such as this, but you also get to become wonderful yourself. And I think we all want that. So do those wonderful things, and until next time, stay wonderful.